Uh, at the moment, uh, we've been holding a four-day uh, hands-on session for VSAT training uh, supported by the ITU and Lindelson, and it has been very interesting. There is a need from day one to, to train people on how they do not know how to uh, control the spectrum analyzer uh, and uh, not even know how to point it to the satellite. Very basic things. But these are people who came from telecom uh, operators. Uh, so we were able to point to intercept and know we were directed to the satellite. But then later we, we had that meeting and then the, and I made a comment about the need. And I tell you right now, what we are doing this week, I am sure uh, if we have some guys from broadcasting and telecommunication companies coming here, these guys have a better knowledge of how to tune dishes. And I, I mean, can, can, can say that. So this kind of training is lacking in WCP, it's really lacking. We thought, we, and I thought I know that I knew it, yes, yes. but uh, then when I came, I thanks for uh, Pete to coming here. We are doing it the formal, the real official way of learning how to tune a satellite dish. And this all goes back to a, an original ITU project that was started about three years ago with respect to putting VSATs into regional areas for disaster purposes as well as for community internet uh, centres. Absolutely. And there's been a, a hiatus of that project, uh, but now uh, the ITU is, uh, is stimulated again. And uh, this training is to help all those uh, countries that have those dishes to, to go out there and install them and, and uh, make them operational, yeah. which is probably one of, the, one of the two things. I think you are right. The key thing about any project is to knowing and knowing, uh, and we know people who knows how to implement it. And that is exactly we are coming back to do exactly that. So, uh, we, as you said, it's, a, it's been three years in this project, but I'm glad now we are going back and do the right thing. Wow. And we have these uh, people certified, which is internationally recognized by Global Visit yes. Forum okay. and Intercept. Uh, and I tell you, uh, we, we just saw the uh, website. Uh, no one in the Pacific uh, is no. qualified as yet. And we are the first group to be uh, qualified formally and internationally recognized. So we're so glad that this thing has been I happening. So. I never knew it would be to up to this level. And I, I thought we'll just be like any other. There has been some visit training in the Pacific before, but nothing like this one. We had to sit down online, and I want to thank these students. They've been, they've been working day and night, because the requirement was to do an online um, two courses online. One was introduction and orientation to the course, uh, 599, and then we have to do 510, uh, revised edition, second edition. And uh, I took it, uh, I think I spent about uh, uh, more than 40 hours in just doing that. I started in Tonga and I came in. This, uh, these guys here went through the same thing. Yeah. And that was the theory. And, but it was a very good online course. It was very good. Well, yes. I, think I do, I think it is. Um, I think we have a number of people in Vanuatu in particular that have been installing VSATs that have not done uh, courses such as this. So, uh, as, as the course and the training is, has told us, that if we don't point correctly uh, and do things correctly, we cause interference. And that just doesn't affect ourselves. It affects other people that may be on the transponders there. Yeah. So, so, Keith is correct that, you know, that there hasn't been anything like this in the Pacific. And people in many ways have probably learned how to do things by other people just showing them. However, how do we know that that other person hasn't had bad, um, you know, bad technique? And that bad technique has been passed on. Okay, so what we can now do is ensure that when uh, VSATs are installed, they are installed properly. And therefore, then we minimise any interference on the on the transponder and improve the signal and quality of the service that's actually given. So, from my perspective of a regulator, you know, I can now be confident that when my staff go to site to inspect these particular apparatus, 
they know exactly what they're looking for. And they can check to see if there's any issue. And they can make sure that is it pointing in the right direction? Is the polarity correct? You know, and those type of things. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the technicians from the government that have been attended uh, here, when they go to install VSATs, or if I engage them to install VSATs, I'm confident that they will also do the same thing. And, and therefore, then we know that within Vanuatu, and all the others that have been represented, that in their respective countries, that what gets installed meets the standard, okay, reduces the, uh, the impact of interference to other users, and ensure that the service operates properly. I think I think we I know something about satellites, but I did not really go into the real fundamental of um, we, I mean they call it now beam balancing. Mm. Beam balancing is a new word for us in the Pacific. Once you point the dish to the satellite and you got the signal and you you're bluffing your way to the satellite. And uh, and for those of you who are watching this, if you are a satellite installer, uh, maybe you might work for Sky in where, whatever you work. Uh, you don't block your way to the satellite. Satellite needs to be pointed directly, spot on. Because if you miss the satellite, not only that you don't have the best service, the, the worst thing is you interfere with other service. And we don't want to do that. Because I think it is okay for receive only uh, TV or just to watch TV, because you don't transmit. But in recent operation, you are going to uplink. Mm -hmm. That's when the damage is going to happen. And, and from a regulator point of view, that's exactly what yeah, you want. Yeah, exactly. But also, because these are going into remote sites, remote locations, we have to be confident that they've been installed correctly. Because we don't want to make another trip back, because that is costly to actually do that. Yeah. So having having everything in place, all the fundamentals, understanding all that, and, and kids, oh, correct. Sure. Okay. Beam balancing was new to me. I had some fundamental knowledge of these sats and satellites, but didn't now have a better appreciation of what's required at the ground and earth station to make things, make, make things work. No. So I think that, that was quite critical. On the first day, it was, uh, it was a refresher of the uh, online material that we actually had, uh, and uh, I suppose uh, a few experiences from the instructor uh, about what we should look for in various elements, and, uh, you know, such as you know, one of the major issues that he has found over his career is that it's not necessarily the visa that's the problem, it's something simple like the cable. So just giving little hints like that, that you know, don't, don't be too concerned about the, about the, the big bits, you know, be concerned about the little bits because the little bits can actually bring you undone. Uh, and then once we'd actually done that and everybody was uh, reasonably confident and, and, and comfortable with the training materials and, and those that were finalising their online course were able to ask questions and get things like that. But I think the real highlight was actually getting out to the, the dish and, and doing the, the hands-on skills training, the hands-on practical. You know, actually winding things up and winding things down and, and pushing things around and, and learning and making and reinforcing what you had learned in the in the online online training. And the reality was is that even though the online one was looking mainly at a 1.2 uh, meter dish and we were working on a 2.3, the fundamentals were pretty much the same. Okay, so learning how to make sure the polarization is correct. Uh, and, and reinforcing a bit more about uh, offset angles of the actual dish and then the elevation, um, uh, yeah, that type of thing. And then, you know, when you've got a big dish, how many times you've got to wind it, you know, to make sure that you're actually getting the, the fine tuning and the azimuth and, and things like that, which was slightly different to the model, but still the same theory was actually there. So all in all, um, for me, that's that's uh, that's how the training actually progresses, and I think for many of the others, it'd be very similar. Yeah, uh, thanks, Brett. I think this training, I mean, especially these last three or four days, uh, we must always remember this is a hands-on training, uh, and the training. This is the second part of the training. The first part, as I said before, normally it should have been done two or three months prior to coming here, and you take the time to do it online. And we did it within one week before we do this. And a lot of us were capable of doing it.
but this is a hands-on yes. uh, training. And Pete introduced it very well. And I think basically there are two things we learned. How to terminate the cable correctly and make it a good connection. And I agree with the trainer, Pete. Uh, most of the problem in, uh, in radio and telecommunication is poor uh, termination and poor connection. So we learned it very well on how to terminate the uh, RT6 uh, with an FCON. Uh, connector. Uh, the other thing about train, this training, uh, I think we learn, we learn more than what we were supposed to learn. Uh, and, and, and to mention that uh, while we were doing this, Pete recognized these guys don't know how to drive a spectrum analyzer. Maybe they, we had the assumption that people came from telecom or maybe uh, radio and spectrum uh, uh, background already know that. So we took a while and we have a quick training on how to drive a uh, spectrum analyzer. It is a very critical, important tool yes. about uh, the training. And so now they are able to do it. Just take a while and they are able to do it. Uh, we could have done more on that, but that, that was not part of the training. Another important part of the training, and I, I hesitate because I don't know how the industry sees, we, we were given the permission from Intelsat to line up the dish and activate the carrier, what they call the Satellite System Operational Guide, SSOG, uh, verification test of our antenna. Uh, and we are in the process of doing that. Uh, and we, we, we thought, we discussed with Intelsat, and they gave us the permission because, and, and Peter was so helpful, and we are doing that. We can call. Uh, and, and this is basically what you do in the field. You install your disk, you finish, park, LNB, connector, modem, connect, and when you come, you don't activate, you call the knock. Yes. Whether it is New Skies or Intelsat or Cassetti uh, uh, or maybe whoever, Chasey said, you call them, I'm ready to test my uh, disk. I believe that I pointed to the satellite correctly, and they tell you when to turn on, and you turn on it. This procedure, we are, we touch base on that, and I want to show students it is what they are expect to do, uh, and, and this is a very high level uh, uh, of, uh, of of training. And I tell you, I finished from cable and wireless after ten years. I never did it <laughs> until I came uh, managed the USB net. That's when I I have to do it and arrange with the uh, satellite operator. Uh, time and frequency and uh, allocation of my recent uh, hub to remote and remote to hub. But uh, something that we had discussed need to do. So I think we are doing more than uh, within a very short period of time. We plan to be here for only uh, two days. Yeah. Now we're here four days four and we're still learning. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much, Mr. ITU, for bringing <laughs> us all together here. It has been a very productive mm -hmm. and very influential uh, or eye-opening uh, training. Uh, well, uh, everyone was very anxious to learn. There wasn't a single student that uh, wasn't paying attention, was looking off into the sky. Everyone was focused on the mission. We, it's a rather complicated uh, process to move that big structure around. We're moving the antenna. We're uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, effort. As a matter of fact, we had moved the antenna so many times, uh, we've actually worn out uh, one of the adjustments. And uh, the antenna is not designed to be, um, you know, uh, installed essentially seven, eight, nine times. And that's what we did. Oh, I, I, uh, there's another suite of uh, VSAT installer online courses that do not require the hands-on skills test, and they really enhance the understanding of uh, the signal processing that goes on inside of the VSAT, and that's pretty important uh, if you're going to troubleshoot in addition to installing the terminal. Yeah, if the terminal has a problem, 
you pretty much have to understand the signal flows, the frequencies, and uh, what what is happening with with the uh, waveforms. And uh, that would probably be a next step. Thank you, and thanks a lot to you and Intelsat for putting on the yeah. training. Thank Very you. much appreciated. Yeah.